Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have quite an information dump because we are going to be naming every member of the Roger Pirates, or at least every member that we know of, which happens to be a fair few more than you may remember. At the time of this recording, I believe that we have now 32 confirmed members of the Roger Pirates, not counting Douglas Bullet of One Piece Stampede because he is not canon and is therefore stricken not only from the record, but from our minds as well. Because we have a lot of information to take here today and we really don't need him clogging us up. In fact, the one and only thing we do need to go on this journey is to begin by pressing that gorgeous red subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, which will allow you to receive regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. A highly recommended practice. And also because I am a self shill, I also have a new channel called Team Pokemon, which is all about experiencing the wonderful world of Pokemon through the eyes of a 30 year old passive aggressive retail worker. So even if you're not a Pokemon fan, this new channel is quite fun. So I hope to see you over there as well, link in the description. But enough of this treacherous non-One Piece business, it's time for some Roger Pirate madness. But the last thing I do need to do is issue something of a soft spoiler warning for anime only watchers. This video is going to contain new information for you. However, I would strongly argue that nothing we're about to go through is actually a spoiler. Basically what's happened is through a combination of the manga and other canon related media, we now know the names and designs of effectively Roger's entire crew. It won't ruin your anime experience, but if you insist on going in as blindly as possible, then, well, this is your warning. But we're going to begin this video by going over our usual suspects because no exploration of the Roger Pirates would be complete without recognizing this crew was led by Goldie Roger, the one and only figure in the history of the world to have been hailed as the Pirate King and the man who kickstarted the golden age of piracy as we know it. And since we're all well and truly familiar with him, let's continue. Backing up Roger was first mate Silver's Ray Lee, also known as the Dark King, and a figure who we are quite familiar with in modern times, having been Luffy's hockey instructor, a ship coater of Sabadi, and a confirmed Kizaru stopper. After him comes a much more mysterious entity named Scopa Gaban, a man who is very consistently featured in the flashbacks of the Roger Pirates and is implied to be a heavily important figure within the crew. Together with Roger and Rayleigh, he may form the third part of the Roger Pirates' own monster trio, and I anxiously await the day that we get to know a bit more about him, because right now, all we know is that he likes axes. Then of course, we do have the two younglings of the crew, the apprentice as pirates Shanks and Buggy, one of whom would go on to become a world-renowned Emperor of the Sea, and the other would go on to become a world-renowned meme. And as for the other well-known duo of the Roger Pirates, we also have Inorashi and Nekomamushi, the current dual leaders of the Mink tribe, who more or less arbitrarily joined the Roger Pirates, although it should be noted that these two left the crew before they landed at Laugh Tale. Similarly, Kozuki Toki was a member of the Roger Pirates alongside Odin, but just as with the cat and the dog, she was not present for the culminating moment of these pirates. But the important reason why these three were on board to begin with is due to following our next member being Kozuki Odin, a man who is rapidly becoming one of the most integral characters in One Piece as we know it. And unlike his vassals and wife, Odin did make it to Laugh Tale. And of course, we cannot forget our final usual suspect being Krokus, the invaluable doctor who was able to keep Roger alive long enough to circumnavigate the globe and become the Pirate King. And currently Krokus serves as something of a whale caretaker at Reverse Mountain, which is indeed an intriguing retirement hobby. And at this point, you might be thinking that we've come close to the conclusion of what we know of this crew. But in reality, we still have roughly 22 members of the Roger Pirates left to go through because yes, this crew was incredibly massive, at least compared to that of the Straw Hats anyway. And the following slew of members were all named by Oda in the SBS of volume 96, if you're curious about where this information comes from. But let's hop into things immediately with Nozdon, a very curious figure who you may know by a different name actually, because this character has been given another official name, which is Seagull. And that came to us through the One Piece Deep Blue data book. However, as of the SBS of volume 96, Oda has changed his mind and he is now Nozdon. All hail Nozdon, a man who we know very little about except for a perpetually angry and or shocked expression that dons his face at all times. And out of everyone else we're about to explore though, Nozdon is admittedly certainly one of the more consistently shown members of the Roger Pirates. But next up, we have a character who often gets confused for Nozdon and or Seagull, but this guy's name here is Sunbell. And as it happens, he and Nozdon Nozdon are both burly, round-faced dude guys. But the fun fact we have about Sunbelt is that he is a fishman who wields a trident in battle. None of which is evident in this particular picture, given how he just looks like a portly human. But Sunbelt does indeed have webbed hands and is apparently quite the powerhouse in term 
terms of raw strength. Moving along to our next member, we have Taro, who would appear to be a blade user, having been shown wielding both a sword and a knife. And I should mention that Taro is someone who has been suspected by the fan base of being a younger Douglas Bullet. But without going into anything too deeply, this has been proven to be incorrect. Although he does often get pictured with a very similar attitude to Mr. Non-Cannon Bullet. Then we have another swordsman named Doringo, who appears to use a two sword style in combat. He's also a very, you know, smiley guy in general, who has almost always been depicted with his trademark one piece determined grin. He also has a pretty simplistic yet cool design with the spiky hair bandana combination. And on the other end of that design spectrum now would be Peter Moo who has much more of a portly aristocrat feel about him. Beatamu has been depicted as one of the shortest members of the crew, which may explain why he seems to be always grumpy, short man syndrome and all. And in terms of his skill set, Peatamu chooses to use a rifle in combat, indicating that he may or may not be something of a marksman, which is interesting given how much he seems to resemble a musketeer. And he is certainly one of the more unexpected designs of the Roger Pirates from my perspective. But now we have another fairly short member of the crew being Mille Pine, who out of context very much resembles resembles a giant of Elbaf. Although taking his actual height into account, it actually makes him seem more like a traditional dwarf. And his weaponry does go on to match his more medieval aesthetic being a spiky mace. And despite not being a giant, I would be very, very surprised if Melee Pine did not have some sort of history with Elbaf or at least fascination with their culture because everything about him so far just screams Viking, which is a visual element generally reserved for the residents of Elbaf. So maybe he was like the Usopp equivalent of the Roger Pirates. Taking a look at someone significantly more suave now, we have Ganryu, coming into this exploration with a perfectly sculpted set of facial hair and an all around air of elegance that the last few members have really very much gone against. With that said, Ganryu appears to be a straight up brawler and chooses to fight donning spiked gloves. So in my mind, he is something of a gentlemanly boxer. Then we have CB Gallant. What does CB stand for? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it stands for cool bro or maybe it's chode bearer. I don't know, the potential is endless. What I will say though is that this guy has a helmet that is very reminiscent of the Corridor Coliseum gladiators with that sort of spotty patterning to it. So we may even have a native dress Rosen aboard the Roger Pirates. And just to add some circumstantial evidence to this, CB Gallant carries a sword on his back, which is a very trademark Corridor Gladiator thing to do. And most characters in One Piece tend to carry their blades on their side, unless they're just too massive to do so, like Mihawk's Yoru, for example. And now for something completely different, we have Don Quino, not to be confused with Doringo. And this is a particularly jolly chap, isn't he? Who seems to enjoy the lifestyle of an old sea captain. We don't really know how or even if he fights, but he does seem to enjoy both eating and smoking his pipe, preferably at the same time, but not eating the pipe. I just realized what I said there. Eating, food, and smoking his pipe. To contrast on Quino, we also have Mr. Mamora, who appears to be quite the thin man and yet another swordsman of the Roger Pirates. His head seems to be one of the more geometrically extreme ones of the crew, as in very One Piece typical background character style, Oda is not afraid to go quite goofy with this guy, giving him some very pointy features, particularly in the nose, chin, and lip region. Although speaking of pointy noses, we now have my favorite name of the bunch being Moon Isaac Jr., who is clearly the son of Moon Isaac Sr. And the most notable thing about this character, apart from that continent of a nose he sports, is that he shares a character trait with Chopper, being very weak to compliments and not really knowing how to accept them. Instead, he just becomes very easily flustered. He has a very sort of nobility turned pirate look about him. And I could see Moon Isaac Jr. having been royalty or at least minor nobility of any given kingdom, but choosing to give up that life for the pirating world for reasons. He's just very, you know, schmick and well-maintained, which does tend to suggest a higher economic class upbringing in this series. Then we have Yui, a character who is quite difficult to make out in this picture actually, but he seems to be a tall slender man wearing a cloak with some very gravity defying hair. That kind of reminds me of all of the weird citizens of Clockwork Island from that second One Piece movie, which is so, so very old that I doubt many people these days have actually seen it. It's a pretty fun one though. And coming up next is Ran Graham, who much like Scott Gaban is apparently an ax wielder in combat. His facial features are quite tiny apart from that rather upset mouth. And I'm not sure if those swirls on his chest, are some sort of funky tattoo or just manly, manly chest hair, or actually maybe it's just like a low hanging necklace. Look, I'm gonna leave the choice up to you. And now I apologize for the quality of this picture 
feature, but when it comes to Mugren, we don't have a lot of options available. He is one of the most background of this series of primarily background characters, and he really only displays the classic qualities of a typical joyous pirate. Fun fact though, he has a rank and was referred to as Colonel Mugren by Oda, so he may have some sort of military background. Not within the Marines though, because they don't use the Colonel ranking. Next up is another more aristocratic looking member because we have a surprising amount of those, but it is Max Marx. And very importantly, for whatever reason, each letter in Max is capitalized, whilst Marx is just normal. And in fact, Oda actually uses the English letters M-A-X in the name, which is a very popular use of English in Japanese actually, so it's probably emphasizing that this guy thinks quite highly of himself, and he does give me that sort of Frankie super vibe. For someone a bit more downplayed though, we can turn to Spencer, who seems to embody the typical cool guy sort of design. And actually he's sort of like a strange combination of Cavendish and Trafalgar Law. So I imagine that if the Roger Pirates were ever thoroughly expanded upon, he would become an easy fan favorite. And then we also have the super happy Bunkro, who in this image kind of looks like a Tontada dwarf, but he's just a really short man whose collared shirt makes him look like an elf in Santa's workshop. Meanwhile, this rather mean looking sailor's name is Blue Marine, and he borders on being one of the most stereotypical pirates I think we've ever seen in One Piece with his bandana and horizontal striped shirt. Plus he also has a chin, which looks like it could act as a bridge between entire islands. And for quite possibly the most casual member of the Roger Pirates we've seen thus far, may I introduce you to Erio? And really, he just looks like a middle-aged dad on vacation. A vacation to laugh tail, I suppose, which sounds pretty amazing. But now here's Rowing, whose jagged mouth reminds me a bit of Scotch, that member of the Beast Pirates who we see every now and then. And Rowing also seems to adopt some sort of archeologist chic, having come dressed in his best archeological dig wear. And now here is what happens when you mix Sanji and uh, probably Helmeppo. You get Jackson Banner, who looks like he's having the time of his life. Intriguing little combat fact about this guy though, is that he carries both a rifle and claw style weapons on his hands, making him quite the versatile little being, adept at both long range and short range combat. And finally, we have Yamon, who has both the longest hair and thinnest legs in the crew, in addition to being a spear user. And Yamon very much evokes a sense of the Shandian tribe, which would make some potential sense, given that the Roger Pirates did did go to Skypea, so perhaps they recruited him there. But Yamon is also very interesting because he was only showcased in the SBS of volume 96. So Oda very specifically added him there, and Yamon has not been shown in the actual series as of yet in any way, shape or form. So, uh, all right, we did it. That is a complete roster of the Roger Pirates. I don't expect you to remember all of their names and I don't expect me to remember all of their names, but I guess that is what this video will eternally exist as a reminder of. So I hope you got some value out of this and please do let me know which of these fun figures is your favorite in the comments below. And just in general, what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.